Welcome to the training for healthcare professionals. Let us learn about personal hygiene. This lesson focuses on care of eyes, nose and ears of patients. Now let's take a look at the key learning objectives. After completing this lesson, you will be able to explain importance of patient hygiene, provide for patients personal hygiene needs and demonstrate ways to take care of patients eyes, nose and ears. Now let's find out how to take care of patients eyes. Patient eye care includes assisting patients in the care of eyeglasses, contact lenses, artificial eyes or merely keeping the eyes and areas around the eyes clean. Eyes are sensitive and delicate organs of the human body. Therefore, extra care should be taken to avoid injury to these tissues. Cleansing of the circular area around the eye is usually performed during bath and involves washing with a clean washcloth moistened with clear water. The items needed for eye care are gloves, washcloth or cotton strips, lukewarm water, towels, normal saline for eye wash, 5 ml syringe without the needle. Let us now learn about the procedure to be followed for taking care of patient's eyes. Click each hotspot for more information. Wash hands and on gloves. Clean from inner to outer part canthus of eye with wet warm cotton ball or compress. No soap should be used. Use lubricant such as Moisol or instill normal saline in a 5 ml syringe and wash eyes every 4 hours or if blink reflex is absent. Clean spectacles or contact lenses with appropriate cleansing solution. Some of the important points to remember while taking care of eyes are Contact lenses should be usually removed before cleaning eyes. Label and safeguard glasses in a drawer. Patient must be able to blink to protect the cornea. Never use dry cotton near eyes. Treat each eye separately. Eyes are considered sterile, so always do eye care in a sterile manner. Let us now understand how to take care of patient's nose. If the patient is not able to clean his or her nose, the nurse can assist using a saline moistened washcloth or cotton tipped applicator. Secretions can usually be removed from the nose by having the patient blow into a soft tissue. The nurse must teach the patient that harsh blowing causes pressure and could damage the eardrum, nasal mucosa or even sensitive eye structures. Suctioning may be necessary if the secretions are excessive. Junior nurse Lata was ready to help a bed bound patient in cleaning his nose as he was having nasal congestion. She started cleaning the patient's nose with the help of a blunt forcep and wet gauze. Seeing this, Sister Asha stopped her and said, Lada, this is not the correct procedure to clean a patient's nose. Come, let me show you how the procedure is done. Click each quadrant to know more about the procedure. Wash hands and don gloves. Help patient clean his nose by having patient blow gently into a tissue. If indicated, use blunt forceps with a wet gauze or cotton tip buds to clean accumulated mucus. Remove crusted secretion around nose and apply moisturizing lotion. Some of the important points we should remember while taking care of the nose are as follows. Never insert finger or sharp objects inside the nostril to clean patient's nose. Never try to pull out dried mucus. 
When cleaning patient's nose, pay special attention to nasogastric feeding tubes. Hold tubes and clean and dry only nasal surface. Now let us find out how to take care of patient's ears. Normal ears require minimal hygiene. Patients who have excessive ear wax and dependent patients who have hearing aids may require assistance from a nurse. Ear care involves cleaning the ears, care of hearing aids. The steps involved in taking care of ears are 1. Wash hands and don gloves. 2. Gently clean external ear with a wet washcloth. Cover your forefingers with the washcloth and clean the outer surface of the ears from front and the back. The following points should be remembered while taking care of ears. Do not forget to clean behind the ears. Do not insert sharp objects in the ear canal. Do not use cotton tipped applicators such as earbuds. Remember to remove hearing aids before cleaning ears. This segment of the exam is the eyes, ears, nose and throat segment. We're going to um, start with the eyes and always begin with a general inspection step. So you take a look at your patient's eyes open and closed. And that's pretty much that. Next, you're going to be lighting the conjunctiva and sclera. And to do that, you're going to have your patient follow instructions to look up and to the right, up and to the left, same thing on the other side, up and to the right, up and to the left, while you light the lower conjunctiva and sclera. The next step are the pupillary reactions. This requires you to use your pen light again and to have your patient look straight ahead at something, pick a spot on the wall. And then you will elicit the direct pupillary response so that you're watching the eye that you're shining the light on and then look in the opposite eye for the consensual response. Same thing on the other side, direct and consensual. And you can do that another way. You can look for the direct in the eye that you're shining the light on and then the consensual in that same eye and then the direct and consensual in the same eye. It really doesn't matter which way you do it as long as you find both reflexes, the direct and consensual, in each eye. The next step is the extraocular movements. This requires some careful instruction to your patient. You need to tell the patient to look at the tip of the pen light or your finger, either one can be used, and you want your patient to move their eyes only, not their head, when they follow the motion of your pen light. So can you look at the tip of this pen light and move your eyes only, not your head, as I take you through certain positions and let me know if you see anything double. You do want to inform your patient to tell you if they see double because you may not be able to um, notice that their eyes are not moving um, consensually, but they will see double vision and be able to tell you that. So go ahead and follow the pen light and tell me if you see two pen lights at any point. Remember what the six cardinal directions of gaze are. They are lateral, up and to the left, down and to the left, then across the midline, lateral right, up and to the right, down and to the right. Then you'll bring the pen light to the center and close to the patient while he watches it and look for constriction of the pupils on convergence. And that's the end of that step. Now you're ready to use your ophthalmoscope. You'll put your ophthalmoscopic head on. I'm going to leave specific directions about using the ophthalmoscope to your small group sessions. But just to review quickly, you'll want to put the light on at about 80% maximum. Have a round circle aperture, either the small or the large one, whichever you prefer. Get to positive 10 diopters, which on some ophthalmoscopes is the green 10 and on others is the black. And then make sure that you have your ophthalmoscope in the correct hand for the eye that you're going to be examining. When you're examining your patient's right eye, you will put the ophthalmoscope in your right hand, dial with your right index finger, and use your right eye. 
when you're examining the patient's left eye, you will have the ophthalmoscope in your left hand, dial with your left index finger, and look with your left eye, okay? It's important during this exam to get up very close to the patient. If you think about a keyhole, you cannot see what's on the other side of that keyhole if you're standing far back. The pupil is basically your keyhole, and you have to get very close to it in order to see the optic structures beyond it. So that requires you to actually get your hip or thigh up to your patient's thigh so that you're snugged in close to the patient. You also want to remember to brace carefully so that with this thumb over the patient's brow ridge, if you lose track of where you're at, it will prevent you from plunging your ophthalmoscope into your patient's eye, which would obviously be very uncomfortable. So bracing is important, position is important, correct hand, correct eye, and then you're going to successively look at anterior structures with the higher diopters, and then dial down in diopters until you can look through into the posterior structures of the eye. So you'll be looking for the red reflex first, then you'll get through the pupil, hopefully see vessels, focus in on those vessels, follow those vessels to the optic disc, and then take vessels out to the four corners of observation, nasal superior, nasal inferior, temporal superior, and temporal inferior. So let's just try that. We're going to get close to our patient, we're going to brace carefully, Right hand and right eye for the patient's right eye. Get your light in the patient's pupil. See the red reflex? Start to dial down and move closer until you see a vessel. Follow that vessel to the patient's optic disc. And then to the four corners, nasal superior, nasal inferior, temporal superior, and temporal inferior. Okay, how was that? Sorry. A little uncomfortable. You need to give your patient also very clear instructions which will help you in completing this exam. You want your patient to look ahead at an object on the wall or an imaginary point on the wall and keep looking at that point no matter what happens. This keeps their optic disc from moving around and makes your task easier in finding it. The patient also needs to get permission to have a break if they really feel uncomfortable or if they're tearing a lot they can ask you for a break and you can complete the exam after they get that break. So let's try the other eye. We're going to go around, we're going to get close to the patient. Now we have our ophthalmoscope in our left hand. We're bracing with our right hand over the patient's brow, using our left eye, finding the red reflex, dialing down to get vessels, finding the disc, and then going nasal superior, nasal inferior, temporal superior, and temporal inferior. And we're done. Okay. That completes the eye exam. Now we're going to move on to the ear exam. For that, you change heads to your otoscope and put on a clean speculum. As always, you start with an inspection step. You will see this better when I come around on the other side, but you'll be looking behind the ear and at the pinna, pulling back gently on the pinna, bracing carefully with your little finger while you insert the speculum behind the tragus and find your landmarks. When I come around on the other side, you'll see this better. You do want to hold your ophthalmoscope like this, not like this, not like this, as I've seen some people do. The reason to hold it like this is so that you can use your small finger to brace. It's not as big of an issue with adults who will usually cooperate with your exam, but with children whose heads may be moving or may be thrashing because they don't want you to do this, if you're braced with your little finger against their cheek, ideally you're not going to be causing them pain by plunging your speculum into your patient's external canal. So, you'll look at the behind the ear, look at the pinna, lift up and back on the pinna to straighten the external canal, brace with your little finger, place your speculum gently inside the tragus, move forward until you see your landmarks, and you're done. If your patient, you should give your patient permission to tell you whether this is uncomfortable. 
If you are hurting the patient, you are doing something wrong because you shouldn't be. That completes the ear exam. Next is the nasal exam, which is simple, only has a couple steps. You ask your patient to tip their head back, compress the tip a little, light both nares, and then look to see if there's any evidence of a nasal perforation, and you're done with that part of the exam. Next is the oral exam. You use your pen light, which you place in your non-dominant hand, and your tongue blade, which you place in your dominant hand because you want control of how you use the tongue blade. You always start with an inspection step, look at the patient's exterior, and then ask them to open their mouth. The first step is to look at the gums, mucosa, and teeth, and you do that upper and lower while you light your way. Next, have your patient tip their head back and look at their hard and soft palate, the dorsum of their tongue. You can lower your head again. Lift up your tongue for me. You look under the tongue. Now have the patient put their tongue in their cheek, and you can light the sides of the tongue very well. Same thing on the other side. Open mouth, light the sides of the tongue. This is a common place for oral cancers, so especially in smokers, you want to get a good look at that. Lastly, you have the patient stick their tongue out, and phonate, say, ah, ah, good, while you watch for the rise of the uvula. So that really completes the mouth exam.